I've been asked, how do I know when I have the makings of a right-hand trade? So let's just spread this chart out so we can see more detail. So now we'll just look back, take all the indicators out. So when I look at this screen, I see about, I don't know, there's between 20 and 30 right-hand trades on this. And there's, and and the, the right hand trades are predominant because we've been we were going up here and with the right hand trades are always on the top so you look at you're looking at a, a, move, a an incline you're looking at a, a bullish thing you're shorting the bullish trading behavior so you're looking let's just start right here and that you see a string of higher highs and higher lows there's a string one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 10 of them. On a, it's a weekly chart. This was really, really powerfully moving up. Now, let's, it doesn't matter whether it's 15 minute chart or a weekly chart. You're still looking for the same patterns. So you look for a, a bunch of going in the same direction, and each one of them is a higher high. And this could be a 15 minute chart. It happens to be a weekly. Forget that. But you're seeing, one candle after the other going up, up, and up. And you know nothing goes up forever. Nothing goes down forever. It's going to change. So you look for the signals to help you understand where it's going to change. And so signal number one is after, after this higher high and this higher high, you get a candle that the wick is a lot bigger than any one of the wicks on the previous seven or eight candles. And that's what you see. You see this one here, you got a wick, and then you know that this candle at one time was all black because this is the open, and it moved all the way down to there. While it was down there, when it got from here down to there, it was a black candle. But sometime during its life, it, be it became a white candle up here, everything above that, okay? And you got to figure out, you're looking at a topping tail. That's what you look for. That's the answer to your question. How do you know? Okay, there wasn't any topping tail here, not much there, not much there. None of those had very much topping tail. But this one had a lot more topping tail, a lot more wick on top than any of these other six or seven candles here. That one had a little bit, but it got taken out pretty quick. That that could have been mistaken right hand trade and you and it failed and you got stopped here however this one succeeded and you could tell the way it just finished and you knew that this candle was a short sell idea opportunity when you had that big wick up there and this big wick down here and that's how you know that that wick on top is how you know this may be a sell signal and when that candle turns black, you, you're you more confident it's going to be a sell signal. So get ready to sell. Now you can sell right here, right there when price is right there and your stop is one tick higher. Okay. I call this setup signal trigger. Okay. The setup is this topping tail. The signal is the next candle not making a higher high. And you see how it didn't make a higher high and it turned black and went all the way down to there. So if you sold it right about there on that candle there, the, the, the one that was the topping tail, you enjoyed a ride all the way down to here. And, and then they took your money away on the way back up because they, it, it, at one time price was clear down there and you probably had about $350 on a crude oil contract, $10 a tick. And then that vanished. So you've got to decide, do you want, do you believe that that right-hand trade that got up here, that there's going to be a pullback? And when it starts pulling back, you're expecting a 38% pullback. So let me show you how you figure that out. You draw a fib on here. So that's your target. You start here and you're looking to get filled right about here. You got filled on the fifth candle over. 
the 38.2. That's all you expect. It went down to the 61, but you're only expecting 38. So that's where you take your profit. Now, if you were in a multiple lot trade, you take your profit there and then leave another one on here to run down there. Call it a runner and get a little bit extra because it moved on up, made new highs after that 61% move down. But you were just looking for a 38 to take the trade. Thank you. Okay. Now, that's a good overview, but there's a few more things that I'll talk about another day. But let's stick with that and use that as your benchmark to assess the ones you see in the future. So there's some over here that are forming right now. And of course, it's a weekly chart. It's not going to happen. It's going to take all week for this candle to do whatever it's going to do. It's telling you that it it's trying, the buyers are trying to push it up to get a foothold and push price back up. But it's been going down six weeks. What is this? One, two, three, four, five weeks it's going down. And I think we're expecting more downside. Oh, I think I'm expected to go down to 32. What did I say? Now, the way you find that out is to draw from here as a weekly chart down to there and up to here. See, it's 30. No, that's 61. And where's price right now this instant? It's 79. So we've got 10 more points to go down to complete this A, B, C, D. Now, not all work, as you can see over here, they don't always work. Would anticipate them working. Consider that. They all resolve, but maybe not in the time frame you're expecting. That's why you look at multiple time frames and do the same exercise, not only on weekly, but do it on the daily and do it on a four hour and do it on an hourly and do it on a 15 minute and then compare those. And, and it's in your best interest to find about three instruments, not five or six or seven or eight. We, we, we look at eight, but we really look at three primarily, gold and oil and maybe the euro and maybe an index. I like oil best and silver second. I like silver better than gold, but gold moves more than silver. Silver's very thinly traded. So just find one of these instruments that you like best. My favorite's oil, but oil's not the noise move. So you got to have a secondary favorite. Well, I, secondary is gold. And I don't trade the S&P very much because it doesn't start really moving until after 6.30, after the New York Open. We're making money in, in, in oil. I mean, excuse me, we're making money in the S&P right now on a short. Uh, one of our traders is, I'm looking at one of, my, one of our traders on another screen. So Order canceled. We took profit on that trade. And we're up on the day in that account. Okay, that concludes my comments on this little short audio video. We'll talk about some more stuff tomorrow.